Hello and welcome back to the Accessible Technology Podcast, where you get to hear about what everyday technology is accessible for disabled people, as well as what ones aren't as accessible. And where you also get to hear about what advice I would give to tech companies about how they can make technology more accessible. My name is Phoebes, and as someone who is paralysed from the neck down, all the reviews and tech stories you hear on here are reviewed from the point of view of someone whose only bit of movement is her head and who operates technology with either a stylus or a chopstick in her mouth. This podcast is available to listen to on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible and Spotify. So if you like what you're hearing, please consider following it and sharing it. I am on uploading new content twice every week until at least mid-August. So please consider following and sharing it if you like what you're hearing. In today's episode, you're going to be hearing a list of the most accessible games you can get for your iPhone. It's like the last episode has a main bit of audio that was originally shot on an iPhone X. Although the games that are mentioned you can also get on newer models of the iPhone as well. As always, A link to the actual video, which was uploaded in August 2019, is available in the description. So you can go and click on that if you want to watch it. And I hope you enjoyed the episode either way. Let's now get into it. So starting us off at number six on this list is Minion Rush. Minion Rush is a game developed by Gameloft and which has been on the market since June 2013 around the same time as the second Despicable Me film came out. The game allows you to run as different characters and to complete challenges and it was one of my favourite games when I was younger. But now when I look at it, there are some things in the games that I can't do. Like tilting to fly a rocket or having to tilt to slide on a slope or to get stars on the moon. And this is even with me having a strong mouth and being able to tilt my throat slightly. So for this reason alone, I will rate Minion Rush as number six. Number five, Temple One. Temple One is a game developed by a Manji studio. Most of the gestures about it I find easy to do, like swiping to the side when you want to turn, swiping up to jump and swiping down to slide. But what I don't like about it is when you have to tilt to get the coin, which I would give to be the same reasons as what I find all the problems with Minion Rush for both. Developers, I would like it better if they could introduce an auto tilt option in the settings. Number four, Number Cross. Number Cross is a game developed by Astroware that was released in April 2012. This is a game I've been playing quite a lot recently and I love mostly everything about it but where I don't like it is where you have to reach up 
very high and they keep on dropping the numbers that need to go in it. Number three, crisscross. Crisscross is another game developed by Astrobell and which was released in April 2012 along with Number Cross. It has the basic rules of any of the crisscross puzzles. But like the number cross app, what I don't like about it is that I often drop the words. Number two on this list is my tip, which was developed by Kiss app in June 2018. Its concept is just throwing knives at a piece of wood. And you can do this by just tapping on the screen. So fitting into the number one spot is Candy Crush by this. Candy Crush is a game developed by King and it has been available for download on iPhone since April 2012. In Candy Crush you can take part in lots of different puzzle types and this to score based on how well you get past and perform them. But anyway, what are your thoughts about the games included in this list? Do you agree or disagree with me on some of the ones that I've included? And which out of the list are your favourites? Or would you include any others instead of the ones in this list? You can let me know your thoughts by giving this podcast a review or by getting in contact with me over on pltechreviews.co.uk via the contact page or getting in contact with me via the contact page over on phoebelow.com Personally, I still find a number of these games easy to use, even today, especially Knife Hit, which I might play most of the time when listening to political news, as well as Number Cross, Criss Cross and Candy Cross. But in recent months, I have found myself getting a wee bit annoyed with how Candy Crush limits you to accepting only 20 lives per day and has taken away their extra booster wheel to get more lives and thus forcing adults into gambling away more money. Anyone else agree with me on that? I have often thought that it may be a good idea for Candy Crush and others to also have settings which allow you to change the amount that you're allowed to pay into it each month. But, yeah, I think that might be something we might need to discuss at other times and people can debate with me what you think as well. But if you agree with me or know any other stories of gamers who play those games suffering similar consequences, please consider telling me all about your experiences as well. And I might even do a post about all of those options and what potential options would be better to sort them out if you would like that in future. If you're interested in watching any of the accessible technology videos I've done in the past, you can find all of them by searching for PL Tech Reviews on YouTube. And if you would like to see a couple of my accessible tourism reviews, as well as my film, TV, theatre reviews and political videos, you can see them by searching for my Thieves Journalism YouTube channel. 
So you can also follow my other podcast, the Fabes Now podcast, by searching for it on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Audible and Spotify. However, if commenting on a website or a video isn't something you would be up to, you can also support the podcast by going over to the Fabes Slough Buy Me A Coffee page and that will give you the opportunity to donate a one-time donation towards the podcast as well as getting access to some exclusive episodes when I get time to get some exclusive content produced as well as having access to a shop that I plan to open on it at some point and that will be where you'll get access to a couple of other goods. In the next episode you'll be hearing a review of an Anchor Wireless Charger for an iPhone X which you can still buy for quite cheap and then I'll be getting into various other tech stories after that. I plan to update this podcast twice a week until mid-August when I might have to change things around. But honestly, everything could become a wee bit more regular before then so that I can fit in other tech stories from throughout the year. You can contact me on Twitter by following at Feebslow and my Instagram handle is the real Feebslow. And as well as that, you can also follow the Fabes Now Tech Reviews website on WordPress if you have a WordPress account by searching for pltechreviews.co.uk. But anyway, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!